So we're up to Revelation, still in the last book of the Bible. There's a few activities we got for you today. But today we're going to be talking about the four horses and the four, four horsemen of Revelation. So I've got some pretty cool pictures to show you guys because a lot of people like to draw pictures of the four horses or the horsemen of the apocalypse. So part of the things that John saw when he was on the Isle of Patmos, remember last week we did the candles. The candles were the seven churches. Well, he also saw when the books were was being unsealed in Revelation, he saw these four coloured horses and we're told what they represent. So we're going to look at these four horses of Revelation. Look up here, guys. Don't swing your, don't swing your legs. Look up here. Four horses of Revelation. People draw them differently, but there's different colours. White, red, black, and what's this one? Do you know, Simon? The pale horse. So usually people draw that as green because it represents sickness. Okay, let's have a look through them. So this is Revelation 6 2. They're all in Revelation chapter 6. Look what he says here. And I saw and behold a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Boys, hey, no mucking around, okay? Let's watch up here. Oh, who's this? You see how he's got a crown and a bow conquering to conquer, and he's on a white horse, and this represents the Antichrist, the Antichrist coming to pretend to be like Jesus, because Jesus is going to come on a white horse too. So you see how evil people don't always look evil, do they? Sometimes they look white and pure, but that doesn't mean that they're good. So he's coming to pretend to be like Jesus. And you see he's got his bow here, and he's on the white horse. What about the second horse, Revelation 6.4? And there went out another horse that was red. And power was given to him that sat thereon, so this is the person sitting on the horse to take peace from the earth and that they should kill one another and there was given unto him a great sword. So what do you think the red horse represents? What do you think? Death. Death. Mm, different bit, a little bit different to that, death. Because there's another horse that represents, has death coming after him. What's this one, do you think? Let me give you another guess. Sickness. No, that's the pale horse. So the red horse... Power was given him to take peace from the earth and that they should kill one another. So what is that? It's wars when people are fighting. So these are the wars and the rumours of wars. So here's somebody who's drawn the one sitting on the red horse and a sword was given to him to take peace from the earth. So this is uh, possibly what he would have looked like. Could have looked like. All right, let's go to the third horse, Revelation 6 uh, verse 5. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see, and I beheld and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. So what did the balances represent? What's a balance? Let's have a look. Yeah, this is a balance. You guys ever made one of these at home where you make them on the coat hanger and you put the two balances on there? You can put things in and the coat hanger goes like this. That's a balance. Right, so it's to measure weights. So why does the black horse represent a balance? Because it's all the famines that are going on. Things are getting really expensive. So here's somebody's drawing. I think this looks pretty cool of the black horse. Kind of like, looks like smoke over here. And the one sitting on the black horse had a pair of balances in his hand. Now the last one, Revelation 6, 8. And I looked and behold, a pale horse. Oh, Simon knows these ones off by heart. And his name that sat on him was, Simon? Ah, see how it's a pale horse? It's death. And hell followed with him, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger, that's the famine, and with death and with the beasts of the earth. So this is a final culling of a lot of people here. Are they being killed with a sword, not having enough food, it's hunger, with death and with the beasts of the earth. So even the animals, Jeremiah, hey, sit. 
You too, stop mucking around. Let's see. Timothy, come sit over here, please. Atticus, you go sit over there. I have to separate you guys up. You guys are mucking around. All right, Jeremiah, eyes up here. Atticus, you too. So this is the pale horse. I'll show you a picture of the pale horse. This one looks pretty cool too. You ready? Oh, look at this. So you can see death, people dying here underneath. And the one on the pale horse, often represented with a reaper's, grim reaper, you know, somebody reaping the souls into death. And as you can see, the pale horse here is all disheveled and dying. There's no skin or muscle on his face here. You can only see the skull. So people represent these horses in different ways. But you can see how they always have those characteristics that are described in Revelation. So here's another artist's depiction of the four horsemen of Revelation. So we see here the one on the white horse. Here's the one on the white horse, here. White horse, he's got a crown. Oh, but underneath, see, this one is showing him as satanic because it's the Antichrist. And he's got a bow in his hand going forth conquering to conquer. Here's the one on the red horse. A sword was given to him to take peace from the earth. What's this one? The black horse is the... What was that? Black horse was the balances in his hand. Represents the famines. And then this is the one on the death on the pale horse. Yes, Simon, you got a question? Isn't that thing that the, like the guy on the pale horse is maybe called a scythe? A scythe? Oh, this, yes. That's right, it's a scythe. Grim Reaper's scythe. Here's another one. People draw these different pictures, but you can see again. Where's the one on the white horse? Here. It's got a crown with a bow going forth, conquering and to conquer. The red Jeremiah. Hey, Jeremiah. Where are you going? No, Jeremiah, come back here. Come on, come back. Don't move during class. Come on. Come on you see here. Back here. <coughs> Sit down. Thank you. He took a bow. He's got a crown. Here's the red horse with the sword and the black horse with the balances. And then the last one, the pale horse. And here's one last picture. I think this one's pretty cool. You can't really see the white horse here. White horse. He's got a crown and a bow going forth conquering and to conquer. The one in the red horse with the sword. Black horse with the balances, and look at him. He looks very skinny, just because he represents the famines, people not having enough food. I like this one. Look at this. This looks cool. He's got death on the horse and hell followed behind him. So it's represented by somebody following behind him, representing hell. Okay, so what's our craft for today? You can ask after, Simon. So we've got a craft for you today for the four horsemen. What are we going to make today? Got this. We're going to make the four horses. So what goes first? White. White goes first. I'll show you on the ground. They can stand up. White horse. Abel, you want to come over here and see? You can make these little paper horses stand up. We have the white horse. What's next? Red. Red horse. That's right. So white horse represents the Antichrist. Red horse is wars. What's next? Black horse. And then the last one is the pale horse. Green. Black horse represents famines. And the pale horse represents? Death. Death, that's right, by disease and sword and all sorts of things. Okay? You guys looking forward to making these? Let's go. Let's go to the back.